Burmese amber, especially that from the Ongbar mine in the northern state of Kachin in Myanmar, is known for having some incredible, incredible fossils, including what was last year recorded as the smallest known bird in the fossil record, with the genus name Oculodentavis. Now a new paper has shown a new species of Oculodentavis appeared, and like some of the subsequent research, helps to show that it wasn't actually a bird, it was more of just a very strange kind of lizard. But that's not what we're talking about today. Instead, what we're going to look at is the ethics statement in this paper compared to the ethics statement or complete lack thereof of another paper that looked at fossils from this mine. Now, a lot of the ethics issues, especially with paleontology, have been brought up by the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, who sent a letter to many, many journals to help encourage them not to publish on material from this mine because of the human rights violations that are associated with it. Now, what's specifically happening is in 2017, essentially a conflict rose up between the Kachin people and the government of Myanmar. And that's because the Kachin province is very rich in gemstones and minerals, whereas the rest of the country is less rich in these minerals. And so they want to maintain it for their own financial gain, and Kachin wants to separate because they are a somewhat distinct ethnic group from the rest of the country. Due to the violence that arose in 2017, though, the military was able to take control of the mine and actually essentially used forced labor to get a lot of the fossils out of that mine. So there's a lot of conflict that's happening with these fossils. The ethics statement in this first paper helps to essentially absolve the authors of any direct influence on this conflict. And that's because this fossil was found before the conflict arose. And specifically, it was found before 2017 by the Gem Research Swiss Laboratory. So it doesn't have any direct association with the military takeover of the mine, and so it's not funding the mine or the Myanmar government's continued actions in Kachin. We can compare this to another paper which came out just a few days later, which also looked at Birmingham's amber, but had no mention of the Kachin except on the maps that they used to show where the fossil came from. So there's a big difference in essentially what kind of ethics statements are being taken by different researchers within the overall paleontological community. And this is something that's very serious as these are major human rights violations that are happening, and they should be outspoken for in every case. But these second authors are far from alone. There's many papers which don't mention any of the conflict and human rights violations that are happening, including one paper which actually named the animal after one of the authors on the first paper. Now, the first paper's author actually doesn't have much to do with paleontology, and instead is more of a gemologist, and actually worked for the Gem Research Swiss Laboratory. So he's actually the person who helped to find this fossil and get it into proper research hands. But since that naming, he's actually learned a lot about the situation. And his own foundation, the Prodi Museum Foundation, which helped to research this fossil, put in significant work to help displaced people in Kachin. So they've been doing incredible work there to help try and alleviate the situation. The main issue is, though, that's not the only situation, with the other situation being even more underreported and lasting even longer. In fact, this second situation has been so underreported that it wasn't mentioned by the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology Letters, and it's shown up nowhere in either of these papers. And that's what's happening in the Rakhine state with the Rohingya minority there. So to start, admittedly, the Rohingya are in a different state than Kachin, where the direct conflict is happening involving the mines. However, they've been under severe pressure and essentially an apartheid state from the Myanmar government since at least before 2012. In fact, it would be very easy to look back to their time under British India as essentially the start of continued oppression by different governments without recognizing them as a full people of themselves. And so this is just a continued progression of what's already been happening to the people of the Rohingya. But the reason I mentioned 2012 is because that's essentially when a lot of the violence against the Rohingya really kicked off. And that includes things like them being fully removed from the census as an ethnic minority, them being forcibly removed from the capital of the Rakhine state, and over 140,000 of them being displaced due to violence against the Rohingya minority. So it's not just these kind of passive actions, there are more direct actions occurring against the Rohingya. So even if that first fossil was from before 2017, when the Kachin state violence started, it still may have helped to fund other violence within Myanmar. Unfortunately, the international community's reaction to this was pretty much a shrug of the shoulders, with a few exceptions like Saudi Arabia and a few other Muslim countries who have sent funds to the Rohingya for relief. And because of this overall shrug of the shoulders, though, the situation really didn't change, and so in 2016, all-out war broke out, with Rohingya People's Army fighting a guerrilla war against the Myanmar government. And so again, this was happening even before what was happening in Kachin in 2017. So with so much turmoil and violence happening in Myanmar, 
Where does that leave researchers who are trying to understand the fossils that come from the country, especially since so many of them are so valuable for scientific understanding? Well, right now there's not really much we can do. And that's because it's largely up to the individual authors to try and leave in an ethics statement. And I want to be clear that I applaud the authors of the first paper for including an ethics statement that very clearly states that this fossil did not go towards funding the violence that is happening in the Kachin state. However, it doesn't go as far as I would personally like it to, because it doesn't address the violence that is happening in the Rakhine state. And again, this is one of those things where I can very much pick these fights because I'm not doing this research, and I'm not in a publish or perish kind of situation where I absolutely need to get things out or I'll be fired or lose tenure or something. But it is a situation I think could be very easily applied to apartheid era South Africa in which an international boycott put a lot of pressure on that country to end the violence against blacks living in their country. And I believe even though the paleontology community has a very small voice, we do owe it to the people of the Rohingya to try and support them. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I know this one was a little heavier than anything else I've done, but um, it's something I feel passionate about. If you've been watching the channel all the way through and seeing my post commentary things, you shouldn't be totally shocked by that. It has just been one of those things that's been building up and it's like, okay, this is a good time to try and address it because there are two very contrasting papers with one that doesn't address the situation at all and one that does address it pretty well. And again, as much as it doesn't go as far as my needs, I do appreciate them for addressing what they did. All right, everyone, um, be safe, take care, you know, don't go extinct.